Good afternoon. Welcome back to the channel. This video is not financial advice. I'm a financial advisor. Do your own research, make your own decisions. Okay, guys, welcome back. So in this video, we're going to be discussing the Cloudflare outage. We're also going to be going over what I will call the dependency spectrum, looking at any given application in the Web3 space and seeing how dependent it is on outside third parties, why that matters, and how that can introduce overwhelmingly more risk depending on the situation. But before I get started, I want to read over Dom's tweet from the other day. When Cloudflare went down, apps on the internet computer continued running. However, some users experienced issues where apps used Cloudflare for DNS domain names. I'll explain that here in a little bit for anybody who's not familiar. So the decision was made. We're going to bring that on chain too, which was great to see. Now, jumping ahead, let's go to the dependency spectrum. Regardless of what application in the crypto space we're talking about, they're going to fall somewhere on this spectrum, but it is a spectrum. That's the really important part to get across. Most ICP-based applications will fall down at this end of the spectrum, depending on the application and the use case. But almost every other app in the crypto space is going to fall on the other end of the spectrum because most everything is happening off-chain. All right. Now, a lot of this conversation is we've already done the foundational education and overview for so much of this. So a lot of this is just going to be picking up from where we left off, covering other like nuanced technical issues. All right. Now with this, with OpenChat, I think that there were some issues accessing OpenChat through the OC.app URL that is through a outside third party like Cloudflare. But before OpenChat decided to use Cloudflare for domain names, there was a canister ID, and that's how we all accessed OpenChat and other ICP-based applications, right? And it was really, it's, X, it's just a bunch of random letters and numbers all strung together. And so XXYQ1275, whatever it is. And there were, if we rewind about two years ago, there were a number of people kind of complaining that, you know, the canister ID, it's just not the most friendly user experience. It's not easy to read for a new user. It might make onboarding more difficult, so on and so forth, right? So OpenChat is a fully on-chain application. It's been running for years without firewalls and cybersecurity. However, there's so many different variables you have to consider when you're talking about delivering the user experience and trying to deliver the best user experience possible while not making too many trade-offs to where you jeopardize the health and security and stability of your application. So as opposed to continuing to only have the canister ID as an option through using OpenChat, they decided to use an outside third party for an easy to read domain name like oc.app. And I think they used Cloudflare for that specifically. However, when we're talking about being on the dependency spectrum, if Cloudflare blows up or goes down like it did, and you can still access and use OpenChat through the original canister ID, that's highlighting how resilient ICP-based applications are because they're at the far end of the spectrum on the dependency spectrum, all right? Now, because it looks like they're only using, from my understanding, Cloudflare for their domain name, and if... And when Cloudflare goes down, you can still access OpenChat through the original Canister ID because it's a fully on-chain application, all right? But with all these other applications that fall on the opposite end of the spectrum, they might be using... See, Cloudflare has a, a bunch of different services. You don't have to use all of Cloudflare's services to use them as a provider for something. You could just use them as a provider for your domain name. And something very simple like that. Or you could use them as a full content, del content delivery network in their entire range of services, all right? In which case, let's just say this is Ethereum, this is Solana, it doesn't really matter. Um, and the application that we're talking about does use Cloudflare as a content delivery network along with all the other third parties that are tied into this application. Well, if Cloudflare goes down, it's not like this hypothetical application that's, you know, launched their token on Ethereum or Solana, it's not like you can just go still access the app through their canister ID because there is no canister ID. Um, they're so dependent on their third parties that if those third parties have issues, their app is completely unusable. Completely. All right. So let me back up a little bit. Everything in software 
is a relative comparison to other options, all right? Never look at any one given app, system, whatever it is, in a vacuum and start trying to pick it apart without zooming out and looking at all the other options. Because you might be able to nitpick different things with any given software system, but if you zoom out and it's still an overwhelmingly better, more secure model than everything else, then it's still leading everything else in that context, okay? Um, so everything with software is a relative comparison. For traditional crypto apps, Cloudflare may just be one of many dependencies, and that is the case for the most part across the rest of the space. And for the applications that truly need a content delivery network, they likely use Cloudflare services for more than just the domain name. So if Cloudflare were to go down, the app would not be usable at all. But with OpenChat, you could still access the application through the original Canister ID. There are usually two to three other dependencies outside of a content delivery network tied into these applications that if they were to go down, the same thing would, it's like the app becomes entirely useless because they're at the far end of the spectrum. They're entirely dependent on outside providers as opposed to just using outside providers for one minimal service to help with onboarding, user experience, so on and so forth. Think in terms of degrees and look at everything on a spectrum. Try not to ever look at anything in a black, because everything is, is, is a, you're, you're, you're making trade-offs and you're trying to make the least amount of trade-offs possible while still solving all the necessary problems and delivering the best user experience as you possibly can. Use cases and time chart. Again, going back to this conversation, over time, more use cases will be able to move everything fully on chain with ICP. And in two years from now, It'll be a more ideal network for different types of complex use cases in four years, in six years, in 10 years, so on and so forth. For instance, today, more things are possible on ICP than two plus years ago. The network just needs time to grow, more tooling, more development, more bandwidth, more infrastructure, so on and so forth. More use cases will make sense over time on ICP. It's an entirely new network. It's a new type of software. Ground up rebuild of the entire web and so certain apps early on, early on, which I would consider this early on, we're four years into a 20 plus year roadmap and we still haven't even had a bull market. But so early on, certain apps may need to look at outside services for a better user experience for onboarding like this situation specifically. But again, even if Cloudflare goes down, you can still access OpenChat. So I just want to highlight the resiliency of ICP-based applications because they're at the far end of the spectrum with dependencies. And so add the element of time with everything and everything with software is a relative comparison to other models. Um, and I will say that from what I've seen, every single, I'm gonna coin this term, the too many systems problem. Every single, every single model that I've seen in the crypto space has the too many systems problem, which really is the problem of Web2. And there's so many derivative problems that spawn off from that. Um, yeah, there, there's like having too many systems and all the complexity that comes with that, that creates so many derivative problems. And so most of the Web3 applications in this space have just replicated the Web2 model while simultaneously relying on Web2 providers to deliver the user experience. These are really Web2 based applications. If all, if your main dependencies are Web2 systems, and if you can't operate without those Web2 systems being functional, then that's a Web2 based application in my personal opinion. And at the end of the day, this model doesn't solve for the problems of Web2 because it's using Web2 and it's replicating the Web2 too many systems problem. Okay, let's fast forward a little bit. Again, back to the conversation about the more dependencies you have, the more likely something is going to go wrong. That's very applicable here. And that's not just me saying that. Remember the tweet from Vitalik, dependency minimalism is a lost virtue in software. I'm paraphrasing, but we went over this back months ago. Vitalik made a post specifically about trying to reduce the number of dependencies with any one given application because the more dependencies that you have, the more likely that something's going to go wrong. So most people, important point, in the crypto space do not know how dependent their apps are on third parties. Guys, 
I did that video the other day. I mentioned this in my last video, but I did a video a week and a half ago to, to a different ecosystem. Sui, there was a lot to say before my people avoid the dependency conversation and the conversation around architecture in this space. They avoid this conversation like the fucking plague. And the smart people who actually know what's going on in this space, they understand all of this, but they're going to avoid this conversation at all costs. And they have for the last four plus years. Really think about this. People have been invested in this space for years and spend tons of time and energy online covering this space, looking into the space, researching. But most people in this space don't know how dependent their apps are on third parties or that their apps are dependent on third parties. That's not normal. That's based, That's how dumbed down this entire industry has become because that should be basic due diligence. But they have avoided this conversation like the plague because they're trying to paint these layer ones as the end all be all solution to the future of Web3 when nothing could be further from the truth. And they're doing like so little is happening on the layer one, 99 plus percent of everything is happening off chain. The user experience is being delivered off chain. And so, but they avoid this conversation so that people never realize that because you can continue selling layer over selling layer ones as the end all be all solution when they're not. Whew, sorry. Most projects do not make it known that their app is using six or seven other different providers and entirely dependent on them. And if I had to give the industry any leeway here, I would say this is the standard model for pretty much the entire software space. ICP is a new model entirely. And so this is really how the entire world of software works. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 12, 15 different systems all tied in together, communicating via API calls. But again, that model, the too many systems model, creates so many other problems. And all the rest of this industry has done is just replicated that model so they're not actually solving the problems of Web 2. The conversation is avoided like the plague across the entire space at all costs because it highlights it highlights the lack of functionality, the lack of core functionality of these layer ones. If people really knew how little the layer one was doing and how much the, this whole entire model is dependent on Web2 systems. If people really knew and understood that, they would probably start asking more questions and looking at this more critically. But that conversation has just been avoided for the last however many years when it's one of the more important architecture is one of the most important conversations you should be having. The number of dependencies involved, how dependent applications are on Web2 system, that's one of the most important conversations, but it never happens and it never happens for a reason. If people really knew how little the layer one was doing and how dependent the layer one is on six or seven other systems, they would start asking more questions, in my opinion. But in order to sell layer ones, I'm going over this a little again, I know, but in order to sell layer ones as the future of the web and the financial system, they have to market them as if they have more functionality than they actually have. Apps on chain, agents on chain, so on and so forth. They're trying to sell people on this idea that layer ones are the solution for Web3, even though this entire model is a Web2 model that doesn't even solve for the problems of Web2. Guys, that's all I have for this video. Hopefully, I covered that adequately and, explain, adequately and explained it for everybody. Just keep in mind that OpenChat itself, fully on-chain application, for the sake of the user experience and onboarding, it made sense to use a third party for an easy to read domain name that was easy to remember for people to bring in more people to the to the application. However, if, if even if Cloudflare were to blow up and sink into the ocean overnight, you could still use OpenChat through the original canister ID because they're at the far end of the spectrum when all of these other applications are on the other end of the spectrum and there's near infinite things that could happen with all of these other apps. AWS go down, Google Cloud go down, Azure go down, something wrong with their database management system, something wrong with their firewall provider, something wrong with their content delivery network, something wrong. It's it's like near infinite um, situations that could present problems with this model because you have so many dependencies tied into it. That's all I have for this video. This was not financial advice. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Take care. Have a good day. I'll see you in the next video.